Sometimes I like to come out to the junkyard and just uh, scavenge through, see if I can find any parts. Sometimes you can find some fourth generation Camaros out here. Uh, tail lights usually go bad on those cars. And I've had people asking me, hey, where can I get tail lights? Da 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 da. Like, shit, if I could take them off a fourth gen Camaro and sell them for a little markup, they're a decent price. Hey, if I can make a little money here and there and find stuff for my own car as well. But here's a, a third gen Trans Am or a Firebird, rather. Kind of sad to see these in here, but people don't take care of them. This is what happens. Here's an early model fourth gen Trans Am. Got the LT motor in it. Things looking kind of sad, doesn't it? Racing stripes through it, no justice. Let's see what that inside looks like. Yeah, cracked dashboards, very typical. Someone busted out the back hatch. Don't know if that happened during an accident or whatnot. Yeah, it's got the door key in it. So I ripped this out of the Trans Am. Yeah, I'm taking that because it has that bezel in there. You can see it's got the dividers around the gauges. And that's what I was looking for back in the day when I was doing the white overlays on my Camaro. These things are really hard to find, so I could probably get some money for that. Right next to that Trans Am is a early model 4th gen Camaro. Was going to take the taillights, but that that's unacceptable. These are all cracked up. Things don't last very long. So what I'm gonna do for my car is hopefully in the future get some uh, those black blackouts covers. And I'm gonna take a look in here and see if it has the original speakers and whatnot. I still love that design of that dashboard. That is not the same dashboard that's in my car. I have a 2002, uh, let's see, the 94. I used to have a 93 with that same dashboard. The only problem is cheap, cheap plastic. And it looks like dashboard all cracked up. Like someone has some kind of fabric there covering this up. Let's take a look. Oh, it's, oh, it's, look at that. It is completely decimated. Let's see if I can pull that out. That thing is cracked to hell. That's what happens with these cars. If you don't take care of them, if you don't cover that up with like a dash mat, dash pad. Ah, it's got the 3.4 liter SFI in it. That motor is pure garbage. I had the same thing, a V6. 93, pretty much same color too. My first Camaro. Had no balls, but uh, wasn't something that I really needed a fast car for, you know, in high school. It's got the uh, C C4 Corvette rims on it. Looks like they're pretty chewed up. Those are not worth a damn. Oh, you got some pretty good rubber on the tires, actually. Tires actually look all jacked up, though. Look at this purple fuchsia disaster. Fifth generation Camaro. It's definitely seen better days. Yep, and definitely not a LS or an LT based motor because that motor would be gone if that was the case. And another early fourth gen Firebird here with the same crappy 3.4 liter SFI as that green one. Seems like people are having fun busting out these rear hatch windows. Kind of scummy if you ask me. So I got the stock tape deck in it. How far back this car goes. And crack dashboards. Get it together, GM. Here's a 2001 Cadillac V8. Not LS motor or LS based. North Star 32 valve V8 was a nice car once upon a time ago. Oh my god, that is so sweet! Good day, everyone. Today, all I wanted to do was lubricate my bushings on this car. After I lowered the car, you've seen in my previous videos, I got some suspension squeaks, so I'm just going to go through and uh, grease up all the bushings. And what I was using, water resistant silicone lubricant from WD-40, which uh, it says it does not dry out rubber, which is something exactly what you need. And for all my UMI control arms and pan hard bar, I'm just going to use a grease gun for that. But in the process, 
I, uh, I ended up snapping an end link. All I wanted to do today was bleed the brakes and lower that sway bar a little bit so I can get into the bushings that go up to the sway bar up under the differential, but this thing had other plans for me. So I'm guessing it might have stripped and the tighter I put it, it just didn't want to go until it actually just snapped off, causing me to hit my hand under the car. But you know, that's occupational hazard, isn't it? But using my gear wrench, if I can find that thing, I was using my gear wrench to uh, tighten it down with another Craftsman uh, wrench there. This thing did not break. I am very pleased. Like I've talked about these before. These things are ridiculous. You can hear that it's still, uh, still whining, no problem. Moving very freely. But we'll get into that later. I'm gonna do a little tour on my tool bag there, show you what I got in there now. So, I'm gonna put that all together, give you a little rundown on that. So the end bar, the end, end bar, da, 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 da. All right, so the end link for the sway bar runs from this mount down the sway bar itself to keep everything connected. And I was undoing, can't get in there that easily, let's see. I think I'm going to need some light for that. So there's a bushing holding up that sway bar right there. So I was unloosening that, sprayed that up with some WD-40, yeah, which I'm going to do the front side too, but now I'm going to have to stop what I'm doing and go down to the parts store, give me another end link. It's always fun. You just try to do little simple things and other things have other plans for you. All right, onto the Husky bag. Told you guys I would show you this. And here it is. Okay, so I was contemplating whether or not getting this bag, do I really need it? I was carrying that Milwaukee Packout box, which actually it's, the diameters are, on it, are huge. And it was getting a pain just trying to carry that everywhere. And I had a separate bag that I kept other tools in because not everything fit into that Packout. But everything that I carry doesn't also fit in here. So I do keep that other toolbox, the tool bag rather. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. As to why I picked this bag. So they had this bag on sale during the whole Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Christmas time frame. And the bag was labeled at 30 bucks. I'm like, 30 bucks? Uh, I was really contemplating whether I should pick it up or not. I was looking at other tool bags that costed twice as much, pretty much had the same, the same dimension, same amount of pockets, yada yada. And there was also that Hart brand carried by Walmart. I was looking at their bag and it was no more special than a kid's backpack. And it was still labeled at $30, which I thought was ridiculous. Like, I'm not paying $30 for that. So, lo and behold, a couple weeks after thinking about it, went back to Home Depot, picked this one up. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of it. Uh, it's pretty good size. Nice dimensions. It's not too bulky, but uh, I do have a lot packed in here. I'm going to guess there's probably about 60, 65 pounds worth of tools in here. i got the two side pockets. So what I keep in here is a Milwaukee... Pretty much a screw bit for a drill. Little kit there, picked up at Home Depot. It was on sale, pretty good deal. Also, I keep a little flashlight in here. Now, I got this from my sister for Christmas. I've never heard of this company called Graz. And one thing I really don't care for, it's very plastic. But this thing is awesome. It has two functions. I don't really care too much for the basic flashlight portion of it. It is not that bright, but I mean, it does, it does its job, just not very well. And it swivels, which is pretty cool. So that magnet, you can have it hung up somewhere and just point that light wherever you need it. But here's where I really appreciate this flashlight. You pull it open and it's got a light bar inside. And this light bar is actually very bright. I've used it a few times. It has come in handy, but I've never heard of that company. So. But that is very appreciative. So if you're interested in that, look it up, Graz. Okay, let's go to the other side. So on this side here, keep a couple batteries. A couple M12 batteries in here. So I mostly carry M12 tools 
inside this bag because that's mostly what I use uh, when I'm working on a car. I do have a drill and a hex impact, which I keep in a separate bag. But most of the stuff that I would need to work on a vehicle for small jobs, I do keep in here. So let's take a look at this front pocket. It's filled to the brim. Got pliers in there, got channel locks. Okay, of course, you got to keep your uh, hex keys, your star keys. Got your, I got Torx in here. A knife, always got to keep a knife on you. Uh, some cutting dikes. Got some pretty big ones here, some smaller ones. Uh, a lot of screwdrivers, always got to have screwdrivers. And I got some picks here. Got these from Harbor Freight. It's like a $5 kit, $3 kit, something like that. Wasn't too bad. It's coming handy for pulling off O-rings, things like that. Anything that sticks. I always keep a pair of scissors. Of course, you always got to have your ratchets as well. Not recommending that at all. This is still my favorite uh, socket wrench here. Had this for about 20 years now. GM Good Wrench. That thing has held up. It's time I take that thing apart and show it some love. Give it some maintenance. Right, on to the main pocket. So using that impact, down lug nuts, things like that, that thing can get freaking loud. And uh, I kind of care about my hearing. So pick these up at Arbor Freight. They're about seven bucks, I think. And uh, let's see here. I picked up a set of pry bars, but due to the lack of space for everything that I would like to carry in this bag, I only carry just like medium sized pry bar. Always got to have your bag of zip ties. And here is a little pocket in the front so you can put some items in there you got a couple like bungee cords just in case you need to hold up brake calipers anything of that nature little brake caliper compressor keep my impact socket set in there as well and it's got all these pockets in here in the back so i keep all my wrenches in there got my gear wrench ratcheting wrenches so my other torques as well more screwdrivers I keep my Milwaukee 3 8 ratchet in there as well. With the impact stubby. That's the oil plier wrench. Remove that. There's another socket wrench in there as well. Of course, all this stuff's gonna like come out at you, but mostly when I'm working with it, I just lay the bag flat down. And everything just stays right in place. So it's a good bag. I do recommend this one. I like it. It holds up. It's got a very hard bottom. I mean, most of them do. A uh, very plasticky bottom. Try to keep things together. So it'll sit right up on its own, depending on how your weight's distributed inside the bag. But I do recommend this bag. It's awesome. I've had no problems with it. And that's pretty much it for that. So this video is pretty much just going to be a mashup of whatever and everything. And I don't care. It's my channel. Do what I want. Got some new tires for the Camaro Kumo. The ECSTAs. Uh, PS31. Size is 275. 40ZR1798W. W is pretty much the rating of how like this, how well they're made. Uh, it's almost the top, top of the line. Going all the way down to Z. Pretty big tire. These look pretty nice. Kind of like that it has the ECSTA like etched into it, but not like you're going to see that and not it's going to last long anyway as it wears off if you as you drive. So I picked these up from Tire Rack. They're about $438 free shipping right to the house. And I'm going to take them over to you know, my local tire kingdom, get these installed. Pretty nice tires, seem pretty sticky. So that should ruin and lastly, I was lucky enough to find this Camaro rim. Someone was selling a set of four of them, a whole complete set for 150 bucks, which is not a bad deal. Issue was some of them had that curb rash on there, and nobody likes a rash. So I offered him 40 bucks for this one. He was cool with it. He took it. The reason why I wanted to have an extra rim is that way I can keep one of the old tires on it. So if I ever have a blowout, slap the donut on there, get home, switch it out for a full size. 
because nothing's more embarrassing than driving a sports car with a donut on it. That's pretty much it for this video. So I will see you on the next one. There'll be more to come. And hope you stay tuned. This is Chemicals for out.